climate technology is vital to achieving net zero if the world can deploy and scale it at unprecedented speed. So how can leaders harness the transformative power of green businesses in order to turn that if into reality? Today, we're here with McKinsey expert, Harry Bocott, a senior partner in London and leader of McKinsey Sustainability in the UK and Ireland to talk about hyperscaling green businesses. Harry, if there is just one takeaway for CEOs and business leaders on the topic of climate technologies, what would that be? Well, our planet faces a scaling problem rather than an innovation problem. One way of looking at this is to say that 90% of the abatement that we need can come from technologies that are already proven, but only 10% can come from technologies that are commercially mature. So our challenge is to work out how to scale things that work to things that work at scale. Well, CEOs and boards in organizations around the world have got to think about how to drive shareholder return. And there is one way of thinking about the sustainability imperative, which is that it is a challenge to their cash flows and something that needs to be defended against. We need to comply, but no more. We think that's a misguided posture to take. We think that leaders should be thinking about how to capture value from sustainability, whether that's from shifting their portfolios into areas that will be faster growing, whether that's from building new green businesses, whether that's from profitably decarbonizing their operations. These three things together, we think can deliver significant value. So in some ways, the interests of our planet and our shareholders have never been better aligned. So Harry, what do you see as the next big step that this COP might help achieve in adopting climate technology at scale? Adopting climate technology at scale is one of the central pillars of the COP28 presidential agenda. And what they're really trying to do is think about how they can drive this acceleration in the global south and match the ideas that entrepreneurs and business leaders in the global south have with the capital that typically comes from the global north. Let's try to bring some of this to life a bit. Can you share examples of companies hyperscaling green businesses successfully? Uh, battery manufacturers at scale in Europe, um, bicycle manufacturers, e-bicycle manufacturers in Southeast Asia, um, organizations that are helping shift domestic cooking in sub-Saharan Africa from charcoal to, to biogas. The, the particular technology that is being exploited is of course situation specific, but all of them contribute to moving us forward towards a net zero global economy. Harry, do you have a personal connection to this topic? And if so, would you mind sharing it with us? Yeah, I do. I mean, I get a real sense of meaning from trying to, um, you know, push our planet to a goal that it requires without sacrificing the technology and progress um, that has been so meaningful for us over the last decade. So what I love about hyperscaling climate tech is that it pushes us forward to the outcome that we need rather than thinking about how we move back and compromise. Harry, thanks for talking with us today. To learn more about green business building and what's on the agenda for COP28, register for McKinsey's series of live virtual events at mckinsey.com backslash COP28.